Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Great to have you with us. 888 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, I, I guess we should get the elephant in the room uh, out of the way. Yeah, so to speak. Uh, Keith was obviously stung by a bee yesterday. That's what we're doing right out of the bat. Uh, a really, really big bee. Well, you been, remember the guy with the thousands, 15, the fifteen thousand yeah. bees yeah. the other day. Maybe it was was it a really big bee or was it a lot of stinking bees like like that guy? Well, if we're going um, down your line, it would be a lot of big bees. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> you, thank you. So, are you okay thank though? You. I mean, will yeah, the swelling go now. down eventually? I'm fine now. Yeah. All right. Okay. I was rescued. <laughs> I was rescued. You know that story is an amazing story because the bees. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that guy comes back out and they just decided that his car is going to be their place. Um, yeah, that's weird. They called the fire that's department, weird. called some one off duty fire guy that was a B guy, and mm-hmm. he took him. You know, he rescued him and took him and took him back home. And he's going to have how do you get 15,000 bees out of the back of a car? You put him in, and, and he, he's got a special little bee here, bee here, bee. And he called really? them all, he herded them up, and oh, okay. he put them in a little bee box, and off they went. <laughs> but ha- if that was me, I'm torching the car. Yeah. I'm torching it. It's done. Yeah. In the middle of the Albertsons parking it's lot, it's over. Creepy and weird. <laughs> right? right? I'm not I'm not uh yeah. I I don't I wouldn't get back into it either, I no. don't think. I don't think I would. No, I'm <laughs> yeah. it's gone. Have a nice day. <laughs> uh obviously uh Jeffy with us for the remainder of the week. Uh Keith had I don't know, some family business to take care of, I think, in Atlanta. Maybe a Braves game to see. I don't know. Maybe the Connells the are performing. Racist I, don't, I don't know. State in America. Thank of you. course, that's where he's going. Right. Obviously. Obviously. We're going to talk about. Uh, uh, there was a town hall ar- article that fact check fact checked the fact checkers on the <laughs> Georgia law. So they fact checked the New York Times. It's fantastic. Uh, we'll get into some of that coming up. Uh, but the changing COVID protocols. Um, and it's it's amazing how many times we've talked about the fact that everything we know changes on this virus. Sure does. Absolutely everything. And it continues to change. The CDC said there's no significant risk of catching the coronavirus from a surface or an object now. Yeah, it's like 1 in 10,000 or 1 in 100,000 chance. So that's a, I mean, it's a, yeah, that's a small pretty chance. Pretty big difference. Yes, yeah, it is. I mean, we were we were we were had to wipe down things eight thousand times a day. Right. That's why we're completely out of Clorox wipes for right. so long. Every Clorox product was wiped out. Every uh, off-brand thing, like Clorox, <laughs> yes. completely wiped off the shelves. And that was because we're cleaning every. Sur- I come in here every day and I'm wiping down any disinfectant, all this stuff, because I was told. Oh uh, yeah, you can get it from the surfaces. It can last for. First of all, they told us hours, then it was days, then yeah. it was weeks. And now it's not at all, pretty much? <laughs> Correct. Okay. Correct. And we still need <clears throat> to obviously wear masks. And, well, obviously, and, yeah. You're always, I mean, of course, the mask has to be worn. That That's saving lives, Jeffy. <laughs> it is, the mask saves lives. So, there's that. Yeah. But don't worry about disinfecting surfaces. I mean, of course, open water is fine. And I forget what they called it. They called it uh, uh, hygiene. Oh, what was the? Gosh darn it! They they had some special name for it that uh, you know was just showing off. You know, because everywhere you go, hygiene I mean, theater. Yes, hygiene theater. Because mm-hmm. everywhere you go, I mean, you can't go to a gas station without having some guy come up and wipe down your pump handle and wipe down the buttons all yeah. the, all day, all the time. Yes. Yeah, they said spend less time on hygiene theater. And more time on ventilation. Ventilation being the key. Because I, I guess it comes to airborne then. Yeah. Which we were told didn't happen in the beginning. And now that's the only way you can get right. it. Amazing. And it's this just also, really amazing. It also ties into their big fight for the schools, right? They're saying that the schools can't open because they need uh, new ventilation systems. Ah. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying mm-hmm. that the CDC would have anything to do with that. Because they're about public safety, not about Politics. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. But, <laughs> That's exactly right. But I'm just all, all I'm saying is, this is a coincidence. Yeah. It is a coincidence that yeah. uh, surfaces this, are fine, but it's and these still things the would happen at about the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. 
Uh, but uh, coincidences do happen. Do Obviously, we just saw another example of it. <laughs> So-called hygiene theater is described as the high priority people are giving to sanitize objects in fear of COVID-19, such as restaurants, sanitizing everything from menus to window ledges, something the CDC sh- said shouldn't be a high priority now to prevent huh. the spread of COVID-19. In fact, in a lot of restaurants uh, in Texas, and I, I imagine this is happening all over the country, they don't have a menu at all. You just come in and scan the right. the little barcode. Yeah, no touch, right? And then you get it on your phone. Or your iPad or whatever. It's no touch. Which I like, frankly. I'd, I'd rather do it that way. Because you just... I mean, why not just scan it on your phone? Unless you don't have a phone, I guess. Or your phone doesn't what scan an, things. What an elitist. <laughs> I don't want to touch your filthy menu. Usually the menus are sticky and nasty. And, oh, they're... Yeah, uh, they're... Yes. Yeah, they the, should be burned. They should all be burned. are you eating? <laughs> <laughs> That does say something about the places I eat, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure what grimy diner you're pulling <laughs> off into, but most places are pretty good. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's not a big deal, I guess. The grimy Yeah, menus. don't worry about it. The don't gr- worry about it. Fine. Don't worry about it. You could bathe in COVID-19. You won't get it. You will not get it. Not, so. if you, not if you know. Not if you use a little soap and water once <laughs> right. in a while. You're no, fine. just wash your hands once you get out. Wash your hands for twenty seconds. You're fine. <laughs> uh, I guess the fear of COVID is fading right now too, which is great. Thirty five percent of U.S. adults now say they're very or somewhat worried about contracting. Yeah. Only thirty five percent. Twenty two percent of Americans are very or moderately worried about access to hospital services and treatment. 14% are just as worried about access to COVID-19 tests. Uh, I mean, really? You're worried about whether or not you have access to a test? Um, is- but it's fallen a lot uh, over the last year because, you know, people are just realizing now that, I mean, there's a couple of things going on, I think. I think people realize there's a high, really high survivability rate. Yes. 98%, 99% yeah. almost. Uh, survive it um and the vaccines are helping and it's not spreading as fast yeah and and those numbers are a little bit lower than i actually thought they would be because you know remember we talked about when uh i hate saying when president biden gave his uh, little speech Mm -hmm. his press conference that wasn't a press conference but uh talked about uh you know the dark of winter and Maybe we can gather on the Fourth of July with a couple of people, social distance well, in our backyard. Yourself, yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you behave. And and we said then that's not where America is at, my friend. No, um, America right. is saying enough. And there's and other countries around the world as well uh, have had enough. Uh, you know, I know other countries are going into lockdown, but there's plenty of countries now where people are saying, uh, "How about no?" <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, how about no? Thank you. I've heard that from many, <laughs> oh, many countries. Oh, and they, they've got a banner hanging over the UN right now. How it about says, no? Uh, uh, how, how about, about no? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wish that was hanging over yeah, the UN. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I do too, because that would be very, very handy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, how about getting rid of the UN <laughs> off our soil? Uh, how about yes? Uh, yeah. Uh, how about yes on that? Uh, all right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. The and we're also finding that there there are definitely merits to reparations, uh, according to the first Black Fed president, the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta uh, president is saying that there are definitely merits to reparations in the sense that if people have been harmed by laws, then there should be a discussion about redress. The legacies of past racism are still present in our society. We have to think about uh, what things are necessary to offset the impacts of those old systems that still flow through. And we're doing a lot of those things now. We're penalizing yes, we uh, we're, we're penalizing Whitey on a regular basis. Uh, Whitey has been pushed to the back of the line oh, in yeah. places like Vermont if you want a vaccination. And you're uh, white. No, sorry. I mean... Eventually, we'll get to you, maybe. Uh, but right now, we're doing the minorities. So, beat it, Casper. <laughs> <That guy. laughs> 
<laughs> Beat, Beat it, it Casper. Casper. Yeah, that's what they're telling him. Beat it, Casper. <laughs> that's probably okay. pretty close to a quote. <laughs> it is. I mean, yeah. that's just with the vaccinations, right? I mean, there's a <laughs> number of cities that are talking about and, and doing, uh, you know, I guess they're not, not, I don't know that they're actually reparations, but they're giving, uh, you know, minimum incomes to people who need help mm -hmm. financially. Mm -hmm. And when I say people, I mean all people except Whitey. All people except Casper. Yeah, Oakland is one of those places where they're distributing funds, uh, a minimum income to uh, minorities. Uh, but uh, they're saying, beat it, Casper, yeah. to the whiteies. Even if you're, even Whitey if doesn't you're, get it. Even if you're under the threshold of, the, the, of, of your income right. and would Still, you match don't get it. all the pri – no, sorry. sorry. That's not for you, Whitey. Nope. It says no Caspers here. No Caspers at all. <laughs> so good luck. You're on your own. Also, the 1619 Project docu-series from Lionsgate, yeah. Oprah Winfrey, and Pulitzer Prize winner Nicole Hannah-Jones uh, has landed up, at Hulu. Yeah, coming up on Hulu, right? Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be good. Will it? Because it's a it docu-series. Oh, okay. So, so it's almost true. Almost almost based on reality. Almost true. Although they've said 1619 isn't history. Don't, don't confuse it with actual history. <laughs> Then why are we teaching it in schools? It's not even real. Well, because we're teaching, you know, as part of the docu series program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know. and we're teaching feelings now. The feelings of some people who feel like yes. the United States was founded on slavery in 1619. We feel like that. Uh, we don't feel like it was. It was, uh, you know, founded in 1776. I don't feel that way. Oh. Okay, well, as long as you feel it, then let's teach it in school. Okay? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I mean, this has all been discredited, and we're still dealing with it? Uh, of course, yeah, what does that matter? I mean, the whole Georgia law thing, the voting law being racist or oppressive has all been discredited, too. And, and we're it doesn't matter. still getting hammered with it. They are still talking about like uh, talking about it like it's Jim Crow on steroids. Just so oh, ridiculous. Yeah. ridiculous. So the 1619 project was launched in August 2019 on the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in the English colonies that would become the United States. Uh, by the way, did anybody notice they were English colonies? Anybody notice that? Hmm. Yeah. Even even in this article about the 1619 project. They were, in fact, English colonies. America hadn't been founded yet, so we didn't do that. That wasn't us. Uh, it examines the legacy of slavery in America and how it shaped nearly all aspects of society, from music and law to education and the arts, and including the principles of our democracy itself, which we don't have. We don't have a democracy. Peabody, you wouldn't know that in today's world, I'll tell oh, you that. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Peabody winner and Emmy nominee Shoshana Guy will serve as showrunner and Oscar-winning music by Prudence director Roger Ross Williams will direct the first episode. Oh, it's a series. Good, good. Yeah, so it's, it's not a, just a one-time thing. It's a docu-series. Docu series, docu-series. Yeah, that didn't hit me. I was thinking documentary or docu-movie. Well, you can, you can, but it's a series. There's no way that these production companies, along with Hulu... Uh, can give you the correct information in one episode. That's a really of the good point. Thank you. Thank you. Project. That's There's just too much. Right. There's just too much uh, Casper hatred to present. <laughs> That's correct. Right. That's so, correct. You know, I don't want to hamper them in any way. No. 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 Showing no, no. people how much white people suck. Uh, yeah. I hope it's what like an 800 part series <laughs> docu series. <laughs> I haven't said, but can they do it so. in 800 parts? I, I bet not. <laughs> it's our new 800 hour series <laughs> Ken Burns and the 800 hour docu-series yeah well, he's he's just uh, he's just helping him out yeah uh, <laughs> okay. <just> co-producing <laughs> is, is he done with bees yet because <laughs> that uh, that was riveting yes it was <laughs> I learned a lot from that yeah there's nothing I mean, better than a yeah really long documentary on bees. There's nothing better than that. Unless it's a really long documentary on how much white people suck. So well, no, it's, it's, it's a docu-series. Docu-series, yeah, right. Docu-series, you're right. 
not an actual <laughs> documentary because there would have to be facts. In right. That. Yeah, you don't. We don't want to confuse this with fact, no, with being factual not. at all. Uh, all right. Let me tell you about real estate agents I trust. If you're trying to sell your home, that could be a, a real challenge. First of all, it's a hassle. You got to keep your house immaculate all the time in case somebody comes to see it or somebody wants to see it. Uh, and then you have to worry about updating things. You know, like in our case, for instance, we bought our home nine years ago. And there's just things wow. that are out of date now. Yeah, can you believe we've been here for nine years now? I, I know. Nine years. It's been a while. It's amazing. Well, a lot has changed in nine years. Sure now, has. Everybody wants the same thing, apparently, uh, on their walls. Uh, everything has to be white, which is so racist, so unbelievably racist. Right? Yeah. Um, and ours isn't. You know, it's it's a different tone, and I really like it. Uh, but I guess other people don't. And so... These agents are the ones who can uh, advise you on whether that's necessary for you to repaint your house or, you know, replace countertops or flooring or remodeling a kitchen. Will you get your money out of it? All of those decisions need to be made. And you need help uh, from people who really understand what, what the market and what the people in the market are looking for. And they spend all their time with these people so they know. So, real estate agents I trust. If you want to sell your home for the most money, get the most out of it, and sell it in the least amount of time, these are the people that can help you do it. Real estate agents I trust. The name says it all. Real estate agents I trust.com. Pat Ray. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, by the way, we're having an open house on this this Saturday. If you're in the area in DFW, probably should have looked up the address because I, <laughs> I can never remember what it is uh, for Kexi. Uh, but there's a, a you can uh, you can join us for our grand opening of our kitchen on Saturday noon to two. We've got you know prizes you can. Uh, we're going to have a drawing for, and you get free cookies that you can try out, and uh, you can meet me, and and maybe Jeffy will stop yeah, by. Heck yeah, I'm going to be there. Jeffy free cookies. to stop Duh. by. Free cookies, obviously. He's in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, I, gosh darn it, it was Alta Vista, right? Yes, it's on Alta Vista. Uh, so you know where it's. Just, it's right there. It's right there. Look if you live website. in greater DFW area, you know where it's right it is. there. Right there in Alta, Alta Vista. Vista. You go pull up, you make a left, and it's up there somewhere. Leave your house, take a right, and then you <laughs> make your next left, and then drive down to the end of the... There we are. A couple right of there. roundabouts, and you're there. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, 888 900 uh, if you want to check out the address. Um, Chelsea Clinton has just launched her podcast. This is exciting stuff because now officially every single living person on this planet now has a podcast. <laughs> every living person. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. Uh, her podcast will be called In Fact with Chelsea Clinton. Nice. And she's going to interview guests while using her work in politics, international relations, and public health. Huh. Huh. Won't that be fascinating? Oh, um, yes. Won't it be? Yes. In an introductory statement about the show, iHeartRadio said, "Oh, good. I'm so glad iHeart is is uh, distributing this. That's, oh, that's good. I mean, we're, wonderful. We're on iHeart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Clear Channel Thank people you. appreciate it. Now these are the people who were so in bed with the Bush family. Remember that? Oh, they're so in bed with the Bushes." <laughs> All they do is right-wing rhetoric. That's all they do. And that's why they banned the Dixie Chicks. Right. Remember? They banned yes, the Dixie Chicks from all their stations. I remember that's what was said. Which they did not do. That was. And I worked for iHeartRadio. Well, Clear Channel at the yeah. time. So and uh, their, the country station that we had never once, never once stopped playing the Dixie Chicks. <laughs> Neither did they on any other uh, Clear Channel. <laughs> station so what's it's good just stupid if if it's but this is how i i mean this is how they're fighting back though because she's gonna have guests ranging from and this makes me want to listen mm -hmm. uh, jane fonda oh wow and atlanta yeah. mayor keisha lance bottoms oh they're promoting man. That keisha good? lance bottoms will be on it sometime that would wow now not the first podcast oh don't 
No, oh, okay. Don't remember the first podcast <laughs> was going to feature Queer Eyes Jonathan Van Ness. Oh. Who, okay. I don't know if you know this or not, a couple years ago, he was uh, HIV positive. I didn't know that. And they're having an that. HIV physician and health equity advocate on as well, Dr. Oni Blackstock. So it's got it will be a riveting episode. Wait, the Dr. Oni Blackstock? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, health, good. He's a health equity advocate. Mm. He, we're thinking about the same guy, right? I think. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. One of the things I didn't know, though, <laughs> that it talks about in the story yeah. is that Bill and Hillary already have podcasts through the iHeartMedia. Well, yeah, that's why I said uh, Chelsea, their daughter, was the last remaining person on earth not to have a podcast, and now she has one. I'm sorry. And so every single living person on this planet now has a podcast, including Chelsea Clinton. It's going to be so, good. Oh, good. It's going to be it's good. It's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, so Clinton tweeted out yesterday uh, an announcement about the show saying, excited to share a new project I've been working on. In fact a podcast to explore public health issues in the midst of COVID-19 and beyond. We'll talk about stigma, climate change, choice, Good. and more. Man, Hope you'll listen and subscribe. Oh, you bet. I, I, would I ever love to hear Chelsea Clinton's thoughts on choice and climate change. You bet. <laughs> now, you I, don't bet. Know if, I don't know if this can happen or not, uh-huh. but it's possible. Right, that uh, Chelsea is going to be able to get Hillary and or Bill on her podcast. Wow, do you think is that is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just guessing that it's you know, a possibility. I mean, you're talking about the president and first lady, formerly of the United right. States of America, uh, former senator, secretary of senator, state, senator, secretary of state. I mean, yeah, yeah. Former, uh, you know, had the presidency stolen from her, right? Right. According to her, <laughs> for right. years, yes, yes, not let it go. Would would they appear on their daughter's I don't podcast? Know. I don't know. Wow, I don't know. that would be something. I don't know, but I bet you she can appear on theirs to promote hers. So I would imagine that would probably uh, probably already good. happened. Yeah, yeah probably already did. But anyway, you say that like you haven't heard the. No, I haven't Hillary yet, but Bill. that's what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> looking forward to Bill Clinton as a. Podcast? What? I know. Uh, and we've been missing out all this time. Uh, right. She says, though, uh, with more attention than ever being paid to public health, we have an opportunity to expand awareness beyond COVID-19 to other real and pervasive issues that impact us all. On this podcast, I'm looking forward to bringing conversations with some of the smartest and most interesting people I know to an audience, a new audience. From stigma to choice to the environment, my hope is that listeners will walk away from each episode informed, entertained, inspired, and with a better understanding of why public health matters. Wow, sounds like she wants to interview me from Chewing the Fat. It does I sound mean, that way. She should I mean, call me. You should have been in the first week, uh, that's for thank sure. Thank you. Yeah, definitely thank you. first week. <laughs> Maybe not the first show, well, you know, because well, she's got this you, other guy from Queer Eye. Does it say if it's going to be, but, uh, is it a weekly, a monthly, a, a, a bi-weekly, a daily? I mean, there's no way that, that that Chelsea can knock out a show a day. Every day? No way. Yeah, that's that's crazy. No way can she do that. That's just I crazy talk. That, I, no, I bet she doesn't. She can't do that. Yeah, and I bet Bill and Hillary don't either. No way. Once a week, maybe? Maybe. I bet you Bill and, I got to find out. Oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> there's no way they pull off that. I'm a little disappointed that we haven't, uh. We haven't known about Bill and Hillary's I podcast know, until Bill now. Clinton podcast. It's really sad. <laughs> no. Really sad. There's no way he could not. Uh, all right. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on uh on Twitter. Uh we gotta play a, another uh fabulous celebrity, Shannon Sharp, former NFL great. I think Shannon's in the uh, Hall of Fame, isn't he? Sh- should I think be. he is. Yeah, he should be. Hall of Fame receiver, uh Shannon Sharp. Well, tight end, I believe. Uh, and he, um, he had some thoughts Yeah, 2011. to share. Yeah. He, yeah. Oh, he was inducted in 2011. Wow. Uh, so here's some of, uh, Shannon Sharp's recent thoughts. Uh, is this on the, is this on the Georgia law or what was this on? Yes. It, it, yeah. He was doing his show. Uh, what is it? Undisputed, uh, right? It, with, yeah, uh, with Skip, Skip Bayless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, he was just, you know, he's explaining. <clears throat> well, I'll let him. All right. Here he is. Explain I like it. the move by MLB. I like they're taking a stand and skip. It. At some point in time, you're going to have to put action to your words. Mm-hmm. You say you're about inclusion. You say mm-hmm. you're about uh, doing the right thing. At some point in time, mm-hmm. you have to put those actions into words. I mean, put those words into Wait, action. That's okay, what yeah, right, right. Okay. Now, you're going to be relegated to where you can take this game to. Because there's a lot of other states that are doing the exact same thing as Georgia. Yeah, yeah, Texas, right. Yeah. Thank Florida. you. So those Texas, you, Florida, Florida, Florida. You're off the list. Texas, you're off the list. There are a lot of states We're off the list. that are doing Damn the exact it. same thing that Damn Georgia is that Georgia did. Mm-hmm. That's ah, what I don't dang, understand. Dang, dang. This is what's confusing with me. Mm-hmm. Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, mm-hmm. was on the under ticket for President Trump. President Trump lost what? the election because of fraud, the but they won the election. They, won, they won their won. Senate races. Uh-huh. It was fair and square. I'm confused, Skip. How does that work? He's confused. Well, the top guy lost. You sound but my election was fair and square, so let's do something about it. Now, in 2016, we know Pause it for a second. Fact, what? Russia I love this. Skip is what? like, okay, Skip. What? I think Skip just wants to be anywhere else on the planet <laughs> other than sitting across from Shannon Sharp. No, right he's now. ready to jump right in. He's ready to jump right in. <laughs> he man. doesn't dig this rant at no, all. Not at all. And he shouldn't. Because nobody wants to hear your opinion on politics. You don't know anything about it. Stop it. But this is where he's confusing. (sighs) Yeah, he's confused. Uh, All right, so let's hear the rest of this. They won their Senate races. It was fair and square. Fair and square? I'm confused, Skip. How does that work? How does that work? Well, the top guy lost. Skip, answer us. But my election was fair and square, so let's do something about it. Now, in 2016, we know for a fact (laughs) Russia tried to interfere. Uh Mitch McConnell would do nothing. He wouldn't even bring it to the floor. Now you nice. want to put these right because what they see, Skip, mm-hmm. there's a change. There's a changing of the guard. More people are becoming of age to vote, and they're minorities, and they're voting. So instead of changing your messaging mm-hmm. and try to mm-hmm. reach out to a new base, what do you do? We're going to try to restrict so you can't. It shouldn't be harder wow. to vote than to get a gun. Now what's wrong with that picture, Skip? You noticed that they what's made wrong it harder with that for you to vote than to get that gun. Pause it for a second. What's wrong with that picture? I feel like his fairy godfather because I've just granted that wish. It is easier to vote than to get a gun. Granted. The wish is granted. I don't think you understand what he was saying. (laughs) There it is. Congratulations, Shannon. Uh, You got your wish. It is easier to vote than to get a gun. (laughs) What a stupid statement. It's like the Barack Obama thing. Uh, More people. It's easier to to get a gun than it is to, to get a book. Really? It's it, easier to get a gun it? than it is to get a book? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you for that false premise. I appreciate that. All right. Let's see what else Shannon had to say. It's genius no, so we far. Don't want to do nothing with the gun. No, I want my second amendment. Mm. Mm-hmm. What is more democratic than the right to vote? Now, America, people are looking at us because you go around the world and say, oh, we want fair elections. Uh-huh. And when, when when dictators and they try to put a stranglehold on the, the process what does this of, have of to democracy, do with- you all up in arms. You go uh, in there, you do this, game. and you do that. Yeah, that's but right yeah. here in America, the same thing is happening. They're trying to take us mm-hmm. back. As soon as we get one step, just a little bit of say so. Skip, skip so skip. uncomfortable. That Georgia went red. <laughs> we got two, we got two, we got two, got two senators. Nothing. Got the first black senator in Georgia yeah. history. Yeah, an right evil douchebag. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk <laughs> about, Jewish, uh, pause it for a second. Uh, uh, let's talk about the first uh, uh, black uh, uh, senator from Georgia. Uh, one of the worst people to ever be elected in this country. The guy is a Marxist, first of all. Yeah. Uh, and he believes that we're responsible for our own salvation. Yeah. This is what he said on Easter. Easter. We save ourselves. Wow. I mean, I this warlock guy from, from Georgia uh, is a nightmare. Is it actually a nightmare. warlock? Yeah, it's is warlock. It okay. Yeah, he's an actual I just warlock. want to be clear that I, don't, I think you're missing what Shannon is pointing out, though. Uh, because, what's he pointing out? He, he what was, am I missing? He was happy that MLB moved the All Star <laughs> yeah, game. Because yeah, I noticed it's, that. It's, yeah, easier it's easier to get a gun than it is, is to, to vote. vote. No, but I granted his wish. Oh, okay. no, it's not anymore. Okay, it's now easier to vote, even in Georgia, than to get a gun. Wow, are you a I warlock? I promise too? you that. No, I'm just I'm a magic fairy godfather oh, okay. right now. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Packer Unleashed coming up. Tweets here, Anthony Esch, Osh, tweets, uh, Jeffy is in Keith's chair. I was really wanting to hear the Jeffy opening music today. Well, yeah, you're going to. Which which theme song, though? That's the question. Which one? Is, well, it, is it this one? Or 
or is it this one? When you get stuck between the moon and New York City, your name is Jeffy. That much is true. When you get stuck between the moon and New York City, best that you can do, the best that you can do is chew the fat. Beautiful. Beautiful. Jeffy, he does as he pleases. And then oh, the no, music fades over, away and it's over. Darn it. Can't get through the whole verse. Wow. Darn it. Anyway, I, I'm not sure which, which one you one? want to hear there, but... Uh, <laughs> But it is time now uh, to is? chew the fat with Jeffy. Oh, man. So or it got... will be after I finish up on oh, the okay. uh, on the tweets. <clears throat> uh, Attack Yuki tweets, my middle child could attest that Hangry Yuki is not trying to do the phone menu thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, I, and don't do a phone menu without pictures. I'll walk out. So there are those who don't like the phone menu. All right. Uh, it's peanut butter Jeffy time. Tweets, how long until we see the no Caspers need apply signs? Oh, not long yeah, at all. Yeah, that, those are already around. Tyler's surging gut check stops. Uh, tweets, I would love for Chelsea to talk to Bill about rape culture and the Me Too movement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so would I. Uh, so would I. <laughs> and from a rowdy introvert, forget democracy. Since everything is about feelings nowadays, let me just say that it feels like we're living in a woke woke autocracy in a woke tocracy instead of a constitutional republic it mm. certainly does feel that it way. it does feel that way all right what do you got it in the does. fat pile today well actually i'm still <clears> stuck on the bill clinton chew the fat hillary clinton podcast <laughs> yeah i mean clinton's bill's podcast is called why am i telling you this why am i telling you this right and mm. i listened to why? there's a two-minute promo of why am i telling you this and i made it through about 30 seconds Oof. That was enough. That yeah. was enough. But there is, uh, you know, then the the Hillary podcast. Oof. What is that called? You and me both with wow. Hillary Clinton. Powerful. Am I right? Powerful. Right? Both once a week, I'm guessing? Yes. Yes. All three yeah, once a week? Out, they're putting out once a week. I don't know about Chelsea. Uh, don't know Chelsea about Chelsea. Might, Chelsea. They might be. Okay. Chelsea might actually do some work. Yeah. And pump out more than one a week, but huh. doubtful. Uh-huh. Doubtful. Very. Uh, I would. I would. Uh, I'd be surprised if it's more than once a week. Me too. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't put out a good product like that (laughs) once a week. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Just too much uh, quality there. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So Genesis, uh, I know that we're supposed to be boycotting uh, China now, but uh, Genesis, the Hyundai-owned auto brand, just set the Guinness World Record in Shanghai uh, earlier this week or end of March. with their most unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, you see here, if you're watching on Blaze TV, uh, they had uh, 3,281 <laughs> drones in the Shanghai night sky. Oh, wow. And they did pictures, and then, of course, they did the Genesis uh, logo. along. That's the one that set the world record right there. That's pretty um, cool. That's really cool. Wow. Uh, I know. I know. Wow. So, uh, that's amazing. Uh, just, that was only 3,281 drones. That broke. Uh, the, the other Jeez. record was uh, 3,051. Yeah. And then uh, remember they had the one with 2,200 drones, and we were supposed to, we had the we had the one at the Olympics that was so cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know that that was actually uh, really so. Genesis cool. is the luxury line of Hyundai, right? Like like Lexus is the luxury line of Toyota. Yes, I believe so. Yes. Yep. Cuz that's what uh I mean they're, you know, look, they're great cars, right? I mean, Tiger was driving one, survived a crash. Oh. Right? That was a Genesis. Was so, it a Genesis? Yeah. Hmm. So, that was one of their SUVs, mm-hmm. so good for them. I'm sure it was a rental car though, right? He doesn't live there. Well, the the uh the uh the <clears throat> golfing tournament he was in was sponsored by them and they were providing the auto Oh, okay. Sale. All right. But, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know that you could consider that a rental for Tiger. <laughs> no, probably not. That's, it was just like, take this car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wrecked it? Oh, well. But he did survive it. Yes, he did. That car, he made it. That's yeah. a good ad for them. Uh, GMC, also speaking of cars, has unveiled their new Hummer SUV electric. So that's good. It's the 
Altium drive system in the Hummer uh, electric vehicle SUV. I thought they started. They stopped making the Hummer. They did, but they're redoing it. This new electric one. Okay. Hmm. Uh, it's uh, 830 ho- horsepower, 11,500 pound feet of torque. Can go zero That's to sixty nice. in three point five seconds, and it's they're using their watts to freedom acceleration mode. Mm. So this is their new their new version. Uh, it gets three hundred and fifty miles on a charge. Oh really? And they're saying that they've got this. That's not bad at they're all. They're saying that they've got this new the new capability, <clears throat> and I don't know that it's been proven to work yet, but it says that they can get a uh, hundred miles in ten minutes. Uh, full charge that translates into a full charge in less than an hour, right? Yeah. So that's so you can go a hundred miles in ten. They said so they, hundred they mile they charge, can charge. They can do in the, ten they minutes. Have the capability of the quick charge. So in thirty five minutes, you could get the full charge. If you if you if you believe that, yeah. You know, if you believe that, huh? That's know, I can, mean, three hundred and fifty miles. That's what seventy miles or so better than a Tesla will get. Tesla's yeah, right? only due like 280, big. right? And and are you going to get that, though? Are you going to get that? I don't well, know. not if you're driving uh, like I'd like to drive a Tesla. Uh, those things <laughs> pick up and right. move. And, and if I'm you're sure. driving it like that, yeah, right. you're not going to get three, 300 or and they 280. And they already claimed that uh, I like <clears> the uh, the one talked about um, how they were going to do some of the stuff, and they said with their, with their uh, creative math. So hmm. you might not, you know, if you drive 10 miles an hour and don't use any of the new, it's got like 18 cameras around it, 18 cameras <laughs> around mm-hmm. it. And, you know, so if you don't use any of that stuff, you probably get 350, right? If you start using everything, then it goes way down. But the good thing is it's for everyday Americans because you can get this new one for $112,595. Oh, is that all? You pick it up, no problem. Hmm. Uh, pick it up, no problem. Now they're going to... In the in 2024, they're going to give you one for just under eighty thousand. Okay, that's good. Yeah, perfect. And then they're looking for that's a version great. to come out next year that's going to be, uh, I think, just under a hundred thousand. And then in 2023, just under ninety thousand. So mm. that's just uh, you got a nice little range there, right? All the way from eighty to one hundred and twelve thousand. Uh, fine. Yeah. No problem. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Good news. I think we have, and this is this actually is kind of good news. And even if I'm off by a few days here or there, it's still uh, good to know. I think we're close to about 148 days now until college football. Just thought I'd throw that out there for you. Wow, 148 days. I know. It goes by fast, though. That'll go by fast. I know. So uh, this under the heading of they're not actually lies. They're just based on a true story. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, I see where Kate Winslet said in an interview recently, I cannot tell you the number of young actors I know, some well-known, some starting out, who are terrified their sexuality will be revealed and that it will stand in the way of their being cast in straight roles. Now that's effed up. I'm telling you, she continued, a well-known actor, just an American agent, and the agent said, I understand you're bisexual. I wouldn't publicize that. I can think of at least four actors absolutely hiding their sexuality. Um, I would just to say I don't believe it. Uh, yeah, in today's world, either. in Hollywood, sorry. Yeah, I don't either. No, I don't believe it. Also, Should- they, if they're gay, they shouldn't be able to play a straight person. Right? <laughs> if a if a straight person can't play a gay person, then you, the reverse has to be true which as is, well. Which would bode well to why they don't want to say it. But I still, I don't believe it. I'm sorry, not in today's world. I believe, do I believe that maybe she knew an actor once that had an issue? Yes. And that's where I get back to based on a true story. Uh-huh. Uh, we just expanded the truth a little bit. Uh, just like uh, this story, still under the based on a true story heading. Dennis Rodman uh, was on the, uh, the Breakfast Club, and uh, he told a story about how he was beaten up and threatened for dating a white girl growing up. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, he said that... Uh, seeing a white girl when two white men took him and a little boy that was with him uh, hanging out at a park. He said he was beaten up and thrown against a tree, and one of the guys beating him up put a shotgun to his head and said he'll kill him the next time he sees him with a white girl. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't believe it. 
I'm sorry. You don't believe a lot of these stories. I do not believe it. I'm sorry. No. (laughs) Dennis Rodman was born in 1961. Yeah. Uh, Now, I know his story is that he had a a late growth spurt. Uh Uh-huh. You know, he wasn't 6'7 until after he was 18 or 19 years old. Right? I mean, that's the story. But do I believe that maybe someone drove by Dennis on the road and hollered at him when he was walking down the street with a white girl? And a little white kid who I guess was just a friend. Uh, we don't know who the kid was. Mm-hmm. Um, do I, maybe, maybe. But uh, I know we're not supposed to question it. But I don't believe it. It's based on a true story. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I just don't get it. No. And we had uh, Sharon Stone. It's been in the news hawking her book, uh, "The Beauty of Living Twice." And she, I mean, I don't even know if there's anything left to read uh, from the book. She's told so many stories. She told the basic instinct, uh, leg spreading story that she was duped into doing and was angry and got mad and then decided, you know what? Okay, go ahead. (laughs) Go ahead and do it. It was only the scene that made her world famous. Uh, Then she said that during the making of that movie, she was told by one of the producers that she needed to have sex with the co-star. And she said she called him out. She didn't name him by a name, but she said that I can still remember him walking back and forth in the office with his chocolate malted milk balls rolling on the wooden floor. So if you work in Hollywood, you know who that guy is. You know, the guy that eats the chocolate Mm -hmm. milk balls. Mm -hmm. But she said that he told her, you know, we need some screen continuity. You should probably have sex with the coast. She didn't say who it was that he he she didn't say who told her. And she didn't say who the actor was that he told her to have sex with. But this is how horrible it was, Pat. She said no. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. And nothing happened? Nothing it was happened. just he didn't was, make her? Or, no, no. He didn't kick but her off the set? That's when she was duped into spreading her legs on oh, the boy. basic incident, Oh, my. Uh, naked. Okay. Mm-hmm. She talked about how she, uh, she puts foil over her hotel windows. Thanks to what uh, Mick Jagger told her to do. Mick Jagger said, hey, if you travel to all these cities and you're wiped out and you're tired, what I do is I put tinfoil over my hotel windows and makes it like a tomb and then I get good sleep. Okay. So all right. there's that. Mm-hmm. And then she, she talks about her, uh, she talked about the stroke and the aneurysm she had and, you know, the rehab from that uh, and how bad it was. And, and I believe that for sure. And she talked about how she had surgery she had a stroke? Oh, yeah. Stroke, aneurysm, really bad. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. Mm. She said uh, she had it, and she waited three days to go to the hospital. That's usually not recommended. That's definitely not recommended. <laughs> uh, so she said that she went under, <clears throat> sur- she went, uh, she had surgery to reconstruct her breast after several large benign tumors were removed. Okay. Mm-hmm. But she said that. After the surgery, she discovered that the doctor had given her bigger breasts. Well, that was, they were reconstructing. They were augmenting your breasts because of the, the, the the removal of tissue, right? Mm -hmm. But she said, the doctor said, she woke up and said, oh my gosh, this is, I have one cup size, bigger breasts. (laughs) And the doctor said, "Ah, I just figured they'd go better with your hip size. So. I just did it. <laughs> I don't believe that I'm either. I'm sorry. I don't believe that no. either. <laughs> this is just full of lies. So, full. what a great, I don't even know if you need to read it anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's the book, right? I don't know what more Sharon can tell us. <laughs> you might be surprised. Sharon could probably tell us a lot of things. Well, I mean, there was probably another movie where they told her, you need to have sex with your co-star. And she said, no. And then <laughs> continue to do the movie. That's how horrible Hollywood is. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's pretty horrible. I know. Mm-hmm. And I've been digging through my uh, my uh, sports cards, my trading cards. Mm-hmm. I mean, a Tom Brady rookie card just sold $2.25 million. Wow. That card right there on the screen, if you're watching on Blaze TV, over $2 million. And I actually do think I have this card. Uh, I was digging through some of my cards this weekend, man. Uh, I think I have this card, so I'm willing right now, if you're interested, you can email me, chewingthefat at theblaze.com, and let me know that uh, you'll transfer $500,000 into my PayPal account, and then when I find it, I'll send it to you. So, <laughs> I mean, I promise. It's a good deal. I promise. That's a good when deal. When I find it. Yeah. 
Now, Pat, if you've got you know five hundred grand on you right now, I'll, I'll just uh, forget I the email. I left it in my other pants this morning. What? Oh, darn it! What? Dang! I yeah, I just oh, wore come the on. wrong jeans. It's Wednesday. What? I wore the wrong jeans. Oh no! Ah. Gosh darn it! That stinks. Well, then it's yeah. back to the email. Chewing the fat at the blaze dot com. If you've got the uh, you know if you've got the five hundred thousand, you want to transfer into the PayPal account. Then when I if and when I find the card. Mm-hmm. If and it's, when you find it. It's yours. Okay. I give it to you, no problem. And you're willing to do it for a discount, yes. too. Cause, oh, yes. Because it's right now. The Brady, uh, the rookie card, the Brady. Uh, yeah, this one went for two, 2. 2.25. Two. There was one earlier, uh, about a year ago, that went for a million. Huh. Uh, so, I mean, holy cow. That's a lot of money for me. Do you actually driving. think you have I, it? I really do think I have this card. Uh, I've, I've, I've got, I mean... Well, you should maybe look for it then, I, because uh, it might actually be would worth something. Probably to, be advised to go through those. Cards. Would it be in good condition, or has it been open? It would be in perfect condition, like mint, <laughs> mint condition. You're not going to be able to like tell. new. All right, <laughs> no, it will. No, it will not. We used them. We used them. Yeah, you shouldn't. We, we should never use them. them. Yeah, because you never know. know. You never know. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at uh, Pat Unleashed on Twitter. All right, we're gonna we're gonna share with you the hysteria over this Georgia law. Just so amazing. It sure and is. The New York Times fact check on it is uh, has been fact checked itself by Town Hall. <laughs> Good stuff. We'll share that with you coming up on Pat Gray Unleashed. Great to have you with us. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, from canceled producer Chris abbreviated. All of the Clintons have their own podcasts. True crime podcasts are becoming very popular, so that makes sense. Yeah, yes, it does, <laughs> doesn't it? Though, uh, point of personal hack, irk. Uh, it's easier to get a gun than to cite factual statistics as a Democrat. Now that one is true. It is, that's true. It is easier to get a gun than for a Democrat to give an actual fact. Uh, Stinky Biscuit tweets both chewing the fat themes in on one day. I'm in heaven. Oh. Happy to do that for you. Oh. Uh, Jeffy's hairless cat tweets, only 35 minutes until a full charge. Sign me up. Actually, now nah, I'll have to stick to my car powered by racist fossil fuels. It yeah, is well, nice. Uh, you know, if they could get it down to five or ten minutes like uh, like it takes you to fill up with gas, then you're on to something. Well, I don't you know think what it, I mean? I don't think it's going to matter, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, GM is in all in. Right, I mean, they are all in with this new technology that they're using. I guess if so. It works. I mean, if mm-hmm. if it if it works or not, tough. Supposedly, I think Europe is insisting that uh, that you go electric by is it twenty thirty? I feel like I, might even I be twenty thirty, but, but it was really close. Yeah, it was really close. It was like, wow, okay, uh, it's, that's going to be difficult to do in nine years. Really, completely gone with the combustion engine. By 2030, that's I, I don't know that, that that can maybe in Europe it can happen. I, Plus, because this, they don't use that many cars anyway. Right, but you know, th- and when you talk about <laughs> uh, you know getting so many 350 miles or whatever it was to the charge, mm-hmm. um, you know, like it has us with all the cameras and it's got a feature that you can raise it up another six inches or so because we're off roading. So you can it'll it'll bring it up and down, and it mm-hmm. has a crab mode that turns the wheels sideways. To get you out of things, um, hmm. you're not getting 350 miles. You start using all that stuff. No, no way. I'm sorry. Those batteries are, you know, they're dead. <laughs> you're going to be in the middle of the woods on a rock yeah. trying to get off. And until there's more charging stations, too. That's, they're well, impractical right now. Maybe part of the Humber deal is they'll fly you in a new battery if you're stuck, you know, off roading. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure, they will. Uh, I'm sure that will happen. But when they can get this down, I know when I they know. can get it down to ten minutes, five minutes, you got me. You you get me a full charge, pretty much anywhere I'm going uh, along the way. That I don't have to go to some special place. I don't have to find a movie theater with uh, with a charging station. Well, I mean, those are your gas stations, right? I mean, those you say special place. I mean, gas a gas stations station, are a special yes. place. Yes. Right. So I mean, if you have charging stations somewhere, you go there instead of the gas station. That's your special place, right? No, my special place is, <laughs> uh, is you're going to be at a convenience store like the gas station is. Okay. 
So <laughs> your charging place is the gas station. Okay. All right. When you're there, you don't and I look- can just pull in and and charge up my car, and it it'll go 400 miles on the charge. Then you're talking. You now wanna, I'll buy you your stupid car. Want to be up to Walgreens? Car. No, I don't want to go to Walgreens. I, see, I don't want to go to a movie I go theater. To has has one charging station, and every does time it? Uh, it does. Okay, and I pull in some days, and I and I see a car parked there charging, and I'm like, if I pulled in and needed a charge, I would be so pissed <laughs> right now because mm-hmm. that guy's just sitting there, you know. No, I, I'll be done in six hours. You know, what I mean? I'm just so ticked. Yeah, I. I, I mean, mean that's that, to your point. Mm-hmm. You've got to make it accessible. It takes right? way too long. Well, that's why they've got charging stations at movie theaters. You pull in, you start it charging, and you go watch a movie for two and a half hours. And maybe it's done by the maybe. time you get out. Maybe, maybe not too. Right? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe you got to see another movie. <laughs> right. Right. And then uh, when you're charging it. At home, let's say, where is that? I'm sorry, where is the energy for that coming from? Where, the wall. It, oh, the wall, the right? Wall. It just like it's magic pixie dust almost, shooting out of the wall. Yes. Or or is that a fossil That's fuel? Just the plug. Uh, the plug. The power comes right <laughs> into the, yeah, the wall. Right, and it's charged by electricity that came from a the fossil wall. fuel. <laughs> the wall. <laughs> just magically coming out of walls. I don't know what you're talking homes. about. It comes from the wall. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so everything's fine then. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I loved when we, we test drove that Tesla that was, oh, was, beautiful. That was out here. Was and, nice. I mean, you can't help but fall in love with no, it. No, you can't. When you drive one of those. You can't. I was thinking the other day, too, I saw even one of the smaller models. And I thought, they're cool. Still looks they're nice. great looking cars. Yeah. They're they're really nice inside. Uh, they got that super big uh, screen. I mean, it's it's a cool car. It goes zero to sixty in about I don't know two point nine or something two point nine seconds. Fast. Really fast. Pretty fast. And uh, so there's a a lot going. And it for happens. It. You know, it's not like you if you're driving. Yeah, it's not like you're just, speeding up. I mean, you're just top speed there. almost instantly. It's incredible. So. Uh, they're fun to drive. And that doesn't they look drain great. the battery at all. No, sure, surely it doesn't. And I think that powers the battery, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, it makes it last longer. Yeah. Uh, so when you start, you know, when you, once you've driven it and you've experienced it, then you, you kind of want it. Yeah. But I then know. you look into the reality of it and the practicality of it, and it's just not practical right now. When they can go 200 miles on a charge and you, you have limited charging places, I, I just... It doesn't make sense to me. It makes sense to a lot of people because there's a lot of Teslas. There's a lot of Teslas. Around. In the DFW area, I bet it's about, uh, what this are we, 85% is, this Teslas. Is a good, this is a good market for <laughs> it Tesla. It is, yeah. It's a really good market for Teslas. People love their Teslas here. They do. And the, I have seen that there are uh, more charging stations than there were at first. And yes, that, there, that's yeah, a lot as more. As it was planned. But yeah, there's still there, not there's enough. There's more than the one at the Walgreens yes. I go to there. Yeah, but it's still not enough. It's still not enough. I mean, if I was gonna if I was gonna get in my car, my Tesla, and drive it to Houston, I, I don't. I guess they have. I guess they mark the places where you can get charged yeah. with Tesla. You you can. It'll you can show make it you to Houston, right? On a, on here? one charge? Yeah. No. Mm-mm. Nope. No. That's not, not on a charge. That, that's not a selling point. No, it is not. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. When you can overcome that kind of thing, yeah. Then then tell me about it. Yeah. Then let's talk. Uh, but until then, mm, not so much. All right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, scientists say giant pieces of an ancient alien planet may be lodged under the Earth's surface. Yeah, I've seen the movie. <laughs> Did you see the movie? What, about... what movie was it? Yeah, <laughs> you saw the movie. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, they're seeking to explain a series of seemingly inexplicable formations deep within the Earth's surface. And they may have found an explanation. This piece came from outer space. Researchers with Arizona State University's School of Earth and Space Ex- Exploration. Love them. Me too. Said in a recent published paper that the continent-sized large low shear velocity provinces identify an Earth's... I- in Earth's mantle, especially giant formations of rock, the origins of which scientists have struggled for decades to explain, may have been formed by Thea, 
the protoplanet thought to have slammed into the Earth billions of years ago. Huh. I mean, how often have we talked about Thea? Thea, uh, and the dangers. If of I had Thea. a dime for every time. <laughs> right. The collision between on, uh. the collision, of course, between Earth and Thea is hypothesized to have ejected a significant portion of the Earth into outer space. Those fragments would have eventually coalesced under Earth's gravity to form the Moon. Oh, huh. okay. So the Moon is made up of a big chunk of the Earth. Well, uh, or or Thea. Uh, well, Thea or just a piece slammed Thea. into the Earth, and that knocked part of the Earth into the space. Oh, so not no part, no parts of Thea broke I don't, off. I don't think so. No, those are just jammed into the Earth okay. now. Yeah. So. So anyway, uh, the coalesced into the moon. The Arizona State researchers argue that the leftover Thea mantle materials may have sunk to the bottom of Earth's mantle and caused the LLSVPs, or the Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces. <laughs> uh, what? Okay. Thea's geological mantle, they argue, may have been several percent intrinsically denser than the Earth's ma- mantle, leading it to sink down through the Earth and form the mysterious provinces. The Thea impact theory is widely regarded as the prevailing explanation for the moon's origin now. I didn't I, wow. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Have you? Yeah, I'm, in the movie. In the, yeah, movie. I saw the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. What and the movie was what again? Yeah, I think it was uh, Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> right? They go to the <laughs> They go to their the Middle Earth. Uh huh. Do and, they? Yeah, they and talk, battle and there, and that and their, their ruler is Thea. Mm, okay. And so that's yeah that's where they are. Then there was a journey to the center of the Earth. Yes, that's really. true. And right. Read between the lines. There. That's read you know, between the lines. That was Thea. also about Thea. Yeah, going to see Thea. Okay. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you have. No, s- I, I have not heard about Thea before. You, I, I don't recall hearing about Thea. You actually have seen the Godzilla King Kong thing. Yeah, though? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you like I it? Enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was. I mean, yeah, it was all right. You know, they, they, those movies are what they are, right? I mean, yeah, like you, bad. You go into <laughs> That's called bad. It wasn't bad. Yeah, they're it they're wasn't bad. They're bad, except for this part. I love this. Maybe. I love the sound of Godzilla for some reason. <laughs> uh, I love that sound. Yeah, I mean, there were some good battles. You know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. So there's no plot and the acting's really bad. Oh, the acting was doesn't great. make any uh, sense, but okay. It makes sense. Godzilla and Kong, you know, they're fighting. Who's the, the humans hell? Who's the know. good guy? Is it King is it Kong or is it uh, Godzilla? Which one of them is the good person or uh creature? The the the, the bad guy are the humans. The uh, humans are the okay. bad guys. Okay. It's that makes the, sense. The evil human that's, of course. that's ruining it. Okay. All right. So, so the humans have thrown the Earth out of balance, and that's uh, why guy they... is, this one guy is building his own. Are we, are we spoiling? Because I'm I'm okay, I'm okay with spoiling. You know, no, I got no problem with that. But the one guy is building, an, uh, you know, this mm-hmm. evil Godzilla. I forget what they called it now. It's uh, all you freaks out there with your Godzilla Kong world, like my son <laughs> and my wife are gonna. Hey, call it that. I don't know, but, but so he's made mm-hmm. Kong and Godzilla not like each other, right? Oh, no. I know. Oh, but the, no. he does that because he wants to take over with the bad Godzilla. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And so at some mm-hmm. point the humans help Kong because Godzilla is, of mm-hmm. course, mm-hmm. stronger and better than Kong. I mean, hello, Godzilla can live below water or above. And he, you know can uh, mm. blow fire out of his mouth underwater <laughs> or above. You're not beating fire? that. Wait, fire yes. can come out of his fire. mouth underwater? Yes. Huh, that is, that's a talent. Uh, thank you. That's you're not an beating incredible that. incredible talent. You're not going to destroy. No, you're not. You're not doing that. No. I mean, Kong is still, he's not backing down, but Kong's not huh. stronger than that. Right. Right? So, right. But then the humans help Kong, and then Kong and Godzilla realize, mm-hmm. hey, we're getting messed with. Well, yeah, I'm and glad they so, realize that because. Uh, so they got to they got to take down the evil human bad uh, guy Godzilla. Okay, and they and do, then, and then they and kiss then, and okay. make up and move on. All right. Well, we don't want to spoil it, so we don't. No, know I don't want to spoil. It. We don't know if they it works out or not. <laughs> we 
<laughs> we don't know. We don't. I mean, it might completely go to hell. I We just don't know. That could be coming next year, by yeah. the way. Yeah. All right. Let me tell you about Omega XL. Uh, Omega XL is something that can turn off inflammation in your body. And uh, it certainly did that for me. I, ha- I had this pain in my elbow that ran down the rest of my arm. Couldn't even lift things with my left arm for months. And so... I decided to give Omega XL a try. I'm skeptical about it because, you know, it's not a drug. <laughs> it's all natural. Um, but it, it's backed by 35 years of clinical research. It has the omega fatty acids in it that come from the waters uh, near New Zealand. I mean, it's it, they're tiny little gel caps, super easy to take. Started taking them. After about a week, the pain uh, definitely subsided a little bit. After two weeks, it was gone. And it hasn't come back. It's really awesome and this could change your life if you've been dealing with pain for a really long time and you've tried all kinds of things and they haven't worked give this a try to get you started when you order one bottle of omega xl now we'll throw in a second bottle for free visit omegaxl.com slash pad omegaxl.com slash pad or call 800-844-4888 Welcome to it. Great to have you with us. 888 900 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, got a couple of uh, cool space stories here. Uh, we were talking about the, the Earth thing where some other planet smashed into us billions of years ago or whatever. And that's what they think yeah, is Thea, that was great. sank down into the mantle of the Earth because it's different from the rest of the Earth. And so that's why they don't believe it originated with, a, with this planet. Uh, now... SpaceX Inspiration4, the world's first all-civilian rocket ride to orbit the Earth, has disclosed the final two members of the four-person crew that's expected to undergo that journey into space. Uh, Chris Sembrowski and Dr. Cian Proctor were the additional two people who won seats on SpaceX Dragon spaceship. Uh, So many of these have blown up. I'm not sure I'm making that flight. (laughs) <laughs> with them I'm like, I mean, you know what no this, this is a little bit different no. than the branson all right the branson uh the branson flights because his <laughs> mm-hmm. flights are going to go into space but they're not you know going as far as as this rocket is going yeah the spacex it, spacex is actually taking people literally into space right, right? well into yeah, orbit so, yeah so is branson but he's taking you know that ride is it's like a ride right they shoot you take off and then they you, on, just turn on, around and come an back airplane and then they shoot you into space so you technically go into space right we saw the plane last week and it yeah. turns upside down and yes you look at earth it's you know it's, a but it's not ride. like it's in an, an earth orbit you, you go into space but you're not yeah you're not going to the moon <laughs> you're not, yeah you know you're, you're in space and then you sort turn upside of. down and go hey there's the earth oh my gosh that's great i'm glad i paid a mm-hmm. million dollars and then you come back <laughs> okay well, this one is expected to orbit the Earth for three days at an altitude of 335 miles. Wow. So, I mean, they're serious. This yeah. is Earth orbit. So that's that's a pretty intense trip. Uh, a 38-year-old tech billionaire, entrepreneur, philanthropist, pilot, and the chief executive of Shift for Payments is uh, one of the guys oh, that's thought, uh, on the flight. Before you got to you know what he was the executive of, it sounded like me. Didn't it, though? Yeah, yeah I thought they were going to say Jeff I, Fisher, I but then I was surprised. No, no yeah. it wasn't Jeff Fisher. <laughs> Haley Arsenault uh, announced she's a 29-year-old childhood cancer survivor and physician assistant at St. Jude's. She's the second civilian to join the crew. Uh, Cian Proctor is a geoscientist, science communication specialist, and analog astronaut, one of the newest crew members. And then the Simbrowski guy, Chris Simbrowski, joining the others. 41 years old, Lockheed Martin employee, and an Air Force veteran. Those are the four people uh, going and into space together. That's kind of cool. Does it say how they got, was it just the luck of the draw that they got picked? Or mm. did you have to go down and bow down to Elon and say, I love mm-hmm. you, and mm-hmm. bend the knee to the king? Or what? Well, and I think, isn't this the flight that costs 250000 a piece or more? Okay, now I know that's what they're getting for the Branson flights. Hmm. Huh. Now, the SpaceX liftoff, no earlier than September 15th, 
The ship is scheduled to depart from Kennedy Space Center. Uh, and, yeah, it doesn't, so it doesn't okay. really say. Well, doesn't really say how they got picked. Or how much this costs. Because you know it's going to be a lot. Yes. Yeah, no right? doubt about that. I mean, there's no way you can take people into space for, yeah, it's, okay, it's like a hundred bucks an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's not going to be one of those kinds that's of things. A, that's a different type of TSA you have to go through as well before you get out of that rocket. Sure ship is. Now. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> so there's no speed paths. Also, this is amazing. NASA is going to launch a spaceship to punch an asteroid yeah. into a different flight path. Yeah. Part of their double asteroid redirection test mission. This is what they're testing. So that if they ever need to stop a future impact from yeah. an asteroid, if, if Thea this Jr. is how they do it. If Thea Jr. is on the way, yeah, uh, the, we'll be able to launch something they hope, and you know, redirect it. So we're going to fire this uh, rocket at an asteroid, and in what a year? I think they're going to launch yeah. in, in July. In July, launching in July, and they're saying it was the the impact is going to take place in September of 2022. Where they try to push it into a different flight path. And so this one obviously isn't headed for the Earth. We're just testing to see if we can do it. Correct. And Correct. it'll be interesting to see if we can do it. I know. And it doesn't have to move that much, right? According to NASA, they only have to, you know, push it off a little bit just so that it loses its direction toward Earth. Now, that's great. And, I, you know, good. That's a lot of money spent for that. But it's uh, worth it if, if we well, needed to ever save the Earth. See, from I mean, a, we hear stories all the time of asteroids that, ooh, we didn't see that one. Yeah, I know. And I know. Uh, that is true. And I don't know if you remember the documentary, uh, Armageddon. I do but, remember that documentary. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, mm-hmm. when asked about why we didn't see this coming, we were told that it's a big-ass sky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just, yeah. uh, I, I'm just saying that it's possible. It's uh, possible. We've got to be able I mean. Hopefully we can have a couple, you know, in the garage and mm-hmm. like, oh, hey, there's an asteroid. Mm-hmm. Let's get that and roll, pull it out of the garage and launch that bad boy. If it works. Right, that, I mean, that'd be kind of kind of cool. At least. Yeah, but this will show us if it does work. If we have the capability right. right now to move an asteroid out of its flight path, that would be impressive, really. That's impressive. <laughs> yes, it would. So, because, I mean, yes, that is, would. that's sci-fi stuff. I, we kind of take that for granted because we see it on things like, well, we didn't have the technology Armageddon. in the documentary Armageddon. No, we had to, right. we had to they had to develop it, it really quick well, and to drill. drill into it and then plant right. the nuclear weapon. Because imagine, imagine right. what happens with you. You know, if you hold a firecracker in your hand, <laughs> you know, what happens? You burn your skin. But right. if you if you close your hand, you blow your, your fingers. Your off. wife's going to be open your opening your ketchup bottles the rest of your life. <laughs> so. I think you're the only person living <laughs> who could quote stupid lines. From Armageddon. Well, it's a documentary. I mean, I... <laughs> Everybody else takes that for the dumb movie it is, but not you. I love not that you. movie. That's first right. of all, first of all, that's not a dumb movie. No, it's it a not. documentary. No, I saw the it's movie. A documentary. Okay? I mean, it's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one with Bruce Willis, right? Yeah, or yeah, was that Deep the, Impact? No, Deep Impact is is the other one. Okay, it's do you like Bruce. Deep yeah, Impact like Deep as well? Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. Who is in Deep Impact? Uh, what's his face? You know, and what's her face and what's his face? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. remember. That's why I asked. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Yeah. He's in Deep yeah. Impact. Okay. Yeah. And what's her face? And what's her face? Yeah. No idea who what's her face is. The TV show. Okay. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. So anyway, the technology involved, uh, as talked about on NASA, NASA's website, includes what they call kinetic impactor technique which should be able to change an asteroid's motion in space. Right. Huh. Through I know. kinetic motion. It should be able to. Right. But I can't wait to find out if it does. I know. But we're going to have to wait because the launch isn't until July. <laughs> it doesn't impact it <laughs> until September a, of yeah. 2022. So like 14, 15 Ooh. months later. Yeah. All right. More Pack Grand Leashed coming up. I actually have the actual address now. <laughs> uh, we for, already told you it was right there. If it's right there. You just leave your house, take a right, and then 
a left, and then you go through a couple of, couple uh, of roundabouts. Roundabouts. Right there. You're right there. Uh, or you could just put it into your you know navigation system. Uh, Kexi address is 10353 Alta Vista Road, Suite 611, Fort Worth. All right? So if you're in the area, we'd love to see you on, on Saturday, noon to 2. And Jeffy's coming by, too. Absolutely, yeah. It'd be That'd great. Be fun. Uh, all right, 888 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, where Fawn Gilbert tweets, I got my first tattoo yesterday, and I'm so thankful I'm white because I had to have an ID for the tattoo shop to copy and have on file. Oh, and because uh, Fawn is white, obviously had the ID. Right, so, right. Yeah. He was able to. Had, had Fawn been a minority, obviously, you can't no. get the ID, but- so you don't get the tattoo. And so, we know now that I mean, uh, minorities don't have tattoos. You never see well, a yeah, because you need an ID to get a, a tattoo. Obviously, so you can't you can't get a, a tattoo. When you, if, so if I see a minority with a tattoo, it's like what a back alley tattoo. Like, what the hell? How, how'd you get that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you steal an ID from somebody? <laughs> Is that what you did? Whose ID did you steal to get that tattoo? None of your business, Casper. <laughs> Aaron Grenade, is it, uh, tweets, but what if we realign the asteroid right into the path of an alien planet and they decide to send it back and you got intergalactic ping pong? Yeah, right. Right. Mm-hmm. From uh, Racco, so do you have to be fully vaccinated to take the trip into outer space? Masks required? Probably. Well, I mean, everybody wears a helmet. Uh, a little dead shroom tweets, yeah, let's launch a rocket at an asteroid and split it in two pieces, hurling toward the Earth. I mean, that's what happened in Deep Impact. That's exactly what happened. But here's the thing. We're not splitting this in half. We're just moving it through kinetic energy. Well, I mean, actually, we're guessing we're not going to split it in half, right? We're yeah, we are. We're guessing don't. that this, uh, right. that this, ast- that this, he just bumps uh, into just, it and gives it a little punch love it. tap. Yeah. yeah, and pushes it. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Jeffy gonna J-E-F-F-Y uh, tweets, big ass guy. That's putting it mildly. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. It's, it's a really big ass guy. <laughs> <It is. laughs> this is why we didn't see it coming. I mean, it's clear. <laughs> it's a really big sky. Yeah. Uh, space is big, too. I don't know if you're aware of that. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've got all this hysteria over the uh, new Georgia voting law, uh, and it doesn't seem to calm down. And I mean, we had the president call it Jim Crow on steroids for the love of heaven. Today's professional athletes are acting incredibly Inc- responsible. Incredibly oh. responsible. Yeah, they are. I would strongly support Strong. them doing that. Moving the look major league all star. Leaders, look at what's happened mm-hmm. with the NBA as well. Yeah, look, look, what's look happened at it across the board. Spickable. The very people who are victimized the most mm-hmm. are the people who are the leaders in these in these various sports. Yeah, man. And it's well, the, a bunch of victims in the NBA and the NFL, right? right? And the major league baseball. So many victims. <laughs> I mean, come on. They're all victims. To use his words, come on, man. It's not right. It's not this right. This is it's Jim not. Crow on steroids, what they're doing in, in sure, Georgia. Yeah, Jim Crow on steroids. So that's uh, that was what he had to say about it. Um, so what does the Georgia law actually say? Uh, let's go through it here and, and what the New York Times says about it. And then Town Hall did a fact check on the New York Times fact check, which is great. <laughs> so the law claims not earlier than 78 days or less than 11 days prior to the date of the primary or election or runoff in which the elector desires to vote. Any absentee elector may make, either by mail or fax transmission, by electronic transmission, or in person. So they're giving you all kinds of ways to get this stupid thing. Uh, You can get the absentee ballot. So they'll email it to you, they'll fax it to you, they'll send it to you in the mail... But you just need to do it from 78 days before the election to 11 days before the election. See what I mean? So like a year before the election, you, you can't you can't have them send it to you. Wow. But 78 days, you can. Is that not enough time? If I'm not, let me do the math on that. That's 67 days you have to get the stupid absentee ballot. 
If you can't do that, you're a moron and you shouldn't be voting. Okay? <laughs> Come wow. on. The New York Times says, as with many provisions in this law, the, these address... These address the steps taken and the standards permitted in a COVID-induced scenario last year. So what they did last year was because of COVID. And so after COVID, they cut the period during which you can request the absentee ballot because you don't need six months before the election to request it. During COVID, they thought maybe you did need that. So the reason that they shortened the time span was because it's not COVID-19 related anymore. We're not in an emergency situation. And they don't even mention that in the New York Times. They don't mention that, oh, by the way, the the COVID situation brought on the really long period during which you could order an absentee ballot. Which is really goes back Mm -hmm. to a lot of things that we're covering, you know, where these draconian measures... When are going to, you know, they're going to not want to take them away. Proof positive. Right. Oh, yeah. They want to leave everything in yeah. place. Um, so in order to confirm the identity of the voter, you need a form that will be required of the elector to provide your name. Oh, no. You're asking. <laughs> I've got to provide you my name. Yes. Yes. Date of birth. So you have to know your birthday. It's really hard. The address of your home where you're registered and the address where you want the ballot to be mailed. This is all difficult stuff, right? You mean I've got to give them the address of my house and where I want the ballot to be mailed? Now, correct, What if it's the same place? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how <laughs> mail works. Yeah. 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 I don't know if that's Through the, right? uh, the address system. Okay, yeah. The address system. Yeah. Yeah. That's why giving the address of our kitchen is kind of important if you want people to come to the open house. (laughs) You know, it does make it a little makes it a little easier than just saying it's right there. It's right there. Uh, (laughs) Just go to it. (laughs) The election supervisor. Oh, 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 it's right there. Okay, Okay. we'll send it out. All right. So, okay. So you need to know your address. You need to know where you want it sent. And uh, you need to write down the number of your Georgia driver's license or identification card issued. So you don't even need a driver's license. Just need ID. You can get an ID card from the state for free and just provide the number of that. Is it for free? Yes. Yes, it is for free. If the elector does not have a Georgia driver's license or an ID card, the elector shall affirm this fact in the manner prescribed in the application and shall provide a copy of a form of identification. And then they name a bunch of those, like your utility bill. You can actually use your stinking utility bill. I mean, this isn't difficult stuff. It's really not. It's really not tough. So really, you don't even need an ID. Almost not. No, you don't. You just need to prove that you live there with your... Utility, bill, and I think I guess. it comes down, and you're probably getting to it, but I think it does come down to uh, even if you don't have any of that, they still will let you vote. Yes, right. Yes. So I mean, yes, they, they may they set it off to the side mm-hmm. right for verification, right? But you still vote. You still you can still vote, and then you can work it out afterwards, right? Even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what does the New York Times say about that? Uh, this is virtually certain to limit access to absentee voting. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Is it? How? Seriously, if you can't do those simple steps, you don't, again, you shouldn't be voting. You really shouldn't. If you can handle that, I'm sorry. No. Uh, I, I don't I, have any sympathy. I'd be really interested to know how. How? The, Is it the almost certain? That, that limits access. Well, here you go. The law also creates pitfalls for voters if they fail to follow all the new steps, like printing a date of birth. <laughs> or in some cases, including a partial social... Sc- that's the other thing you can do. You can just give them your last four digits of your social security number. If, so huh. if you don't know that, uh, I can't help you, okay? You're too stupid. I can't help you. And again, you shouldn't be voting, okay? Okay. We all right with that? <laughs> this is... But the 
It New York like, Times. It sounds like you are you want to limit access. I know it does, it and, like and especially for minorities, because no minorities know the last four digits of their social. <laughs> None of them do. <laughs> That's been proven in every survey ever done. Blacks and Hispanics, Asians, right. they don't know their last four digits. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the ones in the city and the urban areas. And <laughs> yeah, some suburban minorities do know. A few, but there's only like seven of them oh, okay. in the whole country that live, what about in, the suburb, ones that live in the rural suburban areas. areas. No, they don't know. Okay. They don't know. And they can't find it out because they can't get online. So, uh, Okay, another part of the law. Um, absentee ballots not sent automatically. Neither the Secretary of State, Election Superintendent, Board of Registrars, or other government entity nor employee or agent thereof shall send absentee ballot applications directly to any elector except upon request. So you right. have to say, I want it. Right. They're not just going to send these to every single person. Ugh. According to the New York Times. Which is what actually some municipalities were doing that, right? During the, and they were, again, during the COVID protocols. I would mm-hmm. just mail them out. Just mail them to everybody. Right. New York Times says, uh, with the loss of automatically mailed applications, some voters will invariably not request ballots. Well, whose fault is that? Then that's the fault of the person who doesn't request the ballot. Thing is, though, if you don't request a ballot, there's no other way for you to vote. No, yeah, there is. You can go in person and vote. Wait, what? Yeah, you can go in person do and we, vote. Do, does that opportunity made available to everyone? Yeah, it is every single uh, eligible person. Like, let's say over 18 really? 18 or over yeah mm-hmm. and so if i don't request yeah. the mail-in ballot then you can still go and show up in person and go ahead and vote huh <laughs> I, yeah yeah what a concept right and you're gonna have a, a 17 to 19 days before the election to do it or you could actually do it on election day as well hmm really yeah yeah, that's really weird, isn't it? So they'll squeeze me in on the last day available to <laughs> yeah. vote. Is that what you're Which trying to say? Which used to be the only day available <laughs> at one point, uh, not so long long ago. It wasn't very long. There was ago no at such all. thing as early voting when I, when I was growing up. No, no, it was vote, the voting day. You voted on election day, period, and that you show up if you want to vote, show up on election day. Is it really that difficult? No. And if you couldn't make it, then you would request a mail-in ballot. Right. That's exactly right. And there were some restrictions on that, too. They didn't just send them out automatically to everybody. Ridiculous. All right. uh, Let me take 60 seconds here and tell you about Gabby Insurance. Because when it comes to car and homeowners insurance, uh, we deserve better than what we get. And, And a lot of times, when you haven't looked at your policy, and then you do... You think, oh my, I'm paying that much? What? Like, I just did this. Gabby went through my insurance and sent them in, you know, just sent them the information. Yeah. And they find a better policy and they cut mine in half. Nice. In half. Like, it was, I couldn't believe what I was paying. So, this is really worth it just to find out what you're paying and remind yourself of how much you're paying for your homeowners and uh, your car insurance. It's great because you just go online and you upload your information and then they check a bunch of different places, a bunch of different companies, and they find you something uh, better. And usually, Gabby customers save about $900, $961 a year on average, and they'll never sell your information, so no annoying spam or robocalls. And if they can't find you a better price, then you can have that knowledge that you're paying the best price available. That's one of my favorite portions from them is that, you know hearing back from them well no you yep you're paying, paying a good rate good. so uh put your policy to the test like i did get a better insurance with gabby it's totally free to check out there's no obligation go to gabby.com slash unleashed that's g-a-b-i dot com slash unleashed gabby.com slash unleashed Pat Gray. So I think uh, going through the uh, fact checkers of mm-hmm. the fact checkers mm-hmm. for the Georgia law, we've come to the conclusion, as Shannon Sharp did, that it's easier to get a gun than it is to vote <laughs> in Georgia, right? 
No. No, we haven't. We did not come to that conclusion? No, we didn't. Oh, okay. No, we oh, haven't boy, reached that I conclusion. I misunderstand. Yeah. <laughs> At least not yet. Maybe we will by the end oh, of okay. it, but okay. not so far. Uh, another thing the law says is a board of registrars uh, or absentee ballot clerk may establish additional drop boxes. But, okay, this is the drop box thing because uh, they limited the drop box uh, number but may only establish additional drop boxes totaling the lesser of either one drop box for every 100,000 active registered voters in the county or the number of advanced voting locations in the county. Okay, so here's another detail. The Times tried to pretend was not the result of last year's emergency COVID, provisions. Right? Yeah, because yeah they, it was COVID. They, they added a bunch because of COVID. Exactly. Yeah. There were 94 drop boxes across four counties because they didn't want people to have to, yeah. you know, it was an emergency situation. Now there's going to be 23 drop boxes because there's no emergency. And of course, the New York Times ignores all of that. Right. They don't tell you about the uh, emergency provision here. Also in the law, the superintendent of a county or the governor governing authority of a municipality shall have the discretion to procure and provide portable or movable polling facilities. This was a big deal. They did have po uh, po um, mobile places where people could go and vote. Like uh, think of a um, uh, like an RV where you would just leave an RV in, a, in an area, and then people can go to that RV, nice. and it's a polling place. Like a food truck. So it's a mobile polling place oh. like a food truck, well, only you're that. not getting food there because oh, yeah, no. that's another issue we're going to have to talk about. Oh, boy. You're not getting any food there. I'm already pissed. You're, you're voting there. If you want food, there are places called restaurants <laughs> where you can go and get food. I know is you're <laughs> limiting my access to yeah, vote. That's, you're right. You're that's, that's what it all comes down to, isn't it? <laughs> so, so what they don't tell you in the New York Times is that during the emergency, during COVID, there were two mobile polling places. Two. <laughs> <laughs> now the, there are none. In the entire state of Georgia? In the entire state, yeah. They, they rolled really? out... They rolled out two rolling polling places. And now they've cut it down to, <laughs> Zero, again, none. limit my access to yes, voting. Yes, again, it all comes down to they're limiting your access. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's so ridiculous. Really? There were two mobile units? I mean, they make it sound like there were hundreds and <laughs> yes, thousands I of thought for sure there would be more than Mobile you know, units everywhere you two. went. <laughs> now they've just eliminated all of them? Yeah, all two they of them. They have eliminated all of them. All two. Both of them. And the only reason they had the mobile unit was because of COVID-19. And it doesn't seem like they were that concerned since they had two. You're right. I mean, <laughs> come right. on. It so, doesn't seem like... It's, just, it's asinine. An entire state, I don't care if it's Georgia or what state it is, it seems like two isn't enough. <laughs> Well, if your goal is to provide a whole bunch of rolling polling, <laughs> In fact, that's what no, they called it, two, rolling polling. Rolling polling. Yeah. Then no, two isn't enough. You should have hundreds of these. Right? But that's not the goal of even uh, a dozen something. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they set up places, you know, that are sort of permanent right, right, like right, right. Uh, schools and right. churches and city halls, that kind of thing. That's where you vote. <laughs> Is that but, too much to ask? But they're not. Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Is. I guess so. Also, there shall be a period of advanced voting on the fourth Monday immediately prior to each primary or election. Voting shall be conducted beginning at 9 a.m., ending at 5 p.m. on weekdays. Okay, that's there's the 5 p.m. thing because they're shutting off the voting at 5. That's when most people get off work. So you're limiting access again. Yeah. Other than observed state holidays during such period and shall be conducted on the second and third Saturdays uh, during the hours of nine to five. So you're getting Saturdays as well. And and you could also do the second Sunday, the third Sunday, or both the second and third Sundays prior to a primary or election during the hours determined by the registrar. 
but they can lengthen the time if they want to in each of these local jurisdictions to 7 p.m. So even during early voting, they can push the voting time to to 7 o'clock, they've even added, on the weekdays. And they've added days. And they've added days, yes. There are more days, and there are more hours. And they can give you even more hours if people complain, and it's not enough. <laughs> God, just unbelievable. One lie after another, really. Uh, okay, the law also states the voting shall be conducted if the registrar or absentee ballot clerk so chooses. The second Sunday, third Sunday. Oh, I already right, mentioned right, right. that. No person shall solicit votes in any manner or by any means or method, nor shall any person distribute or display any campaign material, nor shall any person give, offer to give, or participate in the giving of any money or gifts, including but not limited to, here's the big provision that they all talk about, food or drink. Bastards. They're trying to starve or thirst you to death. If you're a minority in Georgia, because where do all minorities get their food and drink in line, in line, in line to vote? That's what, what that's, do you where, want to do? that's how they live. Die of dehydration. No, I don't want that. But Georgia does <laughs> quite clearly. That's the ad. Man. That's Georgia the does. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want them to. But, but Georgia, Georgia does. does. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, nor shall any person solicit signatures for any petition uh, or any person other than election officials discharging their duties, establish or set up any tables or booths on any day in which ballots are being cast. This is, they're trying to prevent electioneering at the polling place. And they do that everywhere, not just Georgia. And it's a constitutional thing. The founders didn't want you electioneering on election day. Okay, that's all done before election day. Now I've decided and I'm going to go vote. Don't try to influence me right before I go to vote. So that's why you can't give them gifts and things. But does this make drinking water in line illegal? No, it does not. Because the campaign workers can walk right up to you and give you a drink. Really? Yeah, they could. Yeah, wow. They could. That's never happened to me. Um, and I think I've been deprived. I think they were trying to kill me. But it doesn't <laughs> yes. matter because I'm a Casper. <laughs> right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't count. So... Nobody cares that I didn't get food or drink. All I know is I don't want to make it easier to get a gun than it is to vote. <laughs> but Georgia does. <laughs> and they have. Georgia does and Georgia did. I mean, this, and there you that right it. there is It's so ridiculous. Incredible. It's absolutely asinine what is being said about this, the hysteria surrounding it. And the fact that even the President of the United States is perpetrating the lie. And he damn well knows it. And, oh, absolutely he knows it. He absolutely knows it. What? So it's, if, ju- it's despicable. And if you want to play into that he doesn't know, well, then maybe he should be in office. That's for sure. Uh, that's for sure. All right. Well, have a great day. We will uh, see you again bright and early tomorrow. Yeah, baby. Uh, right back here on Pat Gray Unleashed. Oh, and on Glenn Beck program next. Pat Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Network.